Okay, I think we'll start up again if that's all right with you. Uh, so this section now is going to be about the top level of the uh, integrated product development model, ways to perhaps test the market feasibility of your project. So something I regret that I didn't uh, introduce you to is this uh, business model canvas. Um, it seems to be quite a popular thing now. Uh, most businesses, when they're starting up, are using these business model canvas. Uh, I think we've introduced pretty much all these elements to it. But this is a nice way to record the iterations and variations in your business models as you progress. And you can see all the, the key aspects of a business model written in each of the blocks. Now, the call to this is the value proposition. Um, and I spoke uh, to Lars a moment ago, who was saying in interaction design, uh, one of the courses he was at recently, uh, the whole course is set up around iterating the value proposition. So if you do it and you have several iterations of these business canvases, you may want to organize them by where the core value proposition was and how it's iterating throughout the process. Where you start is a bunch of guesses. So most of your projects now will have best guesses in each of these blocks under each of these questions. So the point of the prototyping, just to reiterate, is about turning these these guesses into facts. So you start up with your, your various components of the business model, their hypotheses or guesses, and then we use prototyping to turn them into facts. And one suggestion which I came across, when one uh, popular reference, suggests this pivot model where you have customer delivery leading on to customer valuation and iterate around these two, then on to uh, customer creation and company building. You then test your uh, hypotheses and look for insights. So the point is not just to get a yes or no answer. The point is to learn from it. What were the crucial aspects? What parts of your uh, prototyping and testing were valuable and which weren't? Which are going to cause more problems in the future and which aren't? It's not just it worked or failed. And then, of course, once you've done that on a particular segment of your canvas or several segments, you iterate and create a new canvas. So every time you do a test, you learn from it. So you start with a canvas, you do a test to validate one of the hypotheses, and then you reform your canvas to a new version. You look at what the burning question is, you do another test, and you move on and move on. And the important part, point here is to get out of the building. Of course, you can send out surveys, uh, ask the people next to you, but what you really need to do in most instances is go and talk to the people on the ground level. Let's get some interviews, uh, discussion groups and so on. So here's the cartoon suggesting there aren't any facts in here. Uh, get out the building, go talk to the customers, partners and vendors. And essentially uh, this process is about forming hypotheses, uh, creating design experiments, testing them, then getting the insights, and then forming new hypotheses on new business canvases. So it's this iterative cycle. Now these next, I've got several slides here based around uh, these seven key points. These aren't really uh, so interesting to go through in the lecture now, I'll, I'll breeze through them, but they're useful for reference. So I'll upload them uh, to the, uh, the website and you can go through them and ask questions based on these seven key points. But when you're thinking about where your, your core questions are, so your market feasibility, you might want to think about these seven. Consumption, your market, your distribution systems, market entry, buyers, selling arrangement, and prices. So the first one, consumption. It's really important to identify and, and somehow validate the trends behind your business consumption, uh, your product's consumption. So. We may have a static picture of what the market is, but is it a growing market? Is it gaining popularity or is it shrinking? And then furthermore, what is the nature of the uh, market in terms of its consumption? Maybe the overall size is staying the same, 
but maybe uh, the people who are buying and consuming the product are changing. So uh, it might be moving from a, a younger population to an older population, but relatively speaking, the size of the market is maintaining. So it's really important to notice and validate some of these trends because they may be core to your business. So in my uh, project for the um, art locking device, the, the thefts um, for artwork and paintings hadn't actually grown in the period where I was doing my project. What had changed was the nature of the thefts. So instead of uh, going for nighttime burglaries where people break into um, a museum late at night and try to avoid the security systems, what was happening was people were going in during opening hours in the daytime and quickly stealing paintings off the wall. Now, if you looked at the stats in one way, you wouldn't have noticed that. So it's important to think a little bit deeper into some of the trends, perhaps try to evaluate them because there are new business opportunities there. Uh, moving on to the market, what is the uh, current structure of the marketplace? Um, who is supplying who? What customer lock-ins are had? Are there really established relationships in your market? So if you want to go in and compete against certain established players in the market, what are their lock-in? Maybe certain key players who you'd like to sell to value their uh, relationships with their suppliers. Maybe that's one of their core values, maintaining uh, business relationships. So maybe that might make it a lot more difficult for you to come in and challenge that supplier chain to get introduced or to take out uh, competitors because of the nature of how the market is set up and the relationships. If it's a really uh, dynamic and open market, then you don't have so much problem there. You can go in and pitch your business at the lowest price or the most functionality and you'll win the contract. But in other instances, it's more, more like a cartel where arrangements are already made in advance. Then there's the distribution systems. So you have to ask this question, how are you going to deliver it? Are there any distribution channels already? Can you sell your product to a, um, a supplier who will then distribute it for you? Or do you have to go and deliver every individual product to every individual customer? If there are established supply chains for this, how are you going to go about infiltrating that? So the sun cream uh, product we've uh, worked on before relied on getting the sun cream sold to uh, ice cream vendors who would then go and distribute the product to the various locations for you. Now there's certain tests you can do there to establish will the ice cream vendors actually take this product? Will they think, I don't want sun cream and ice cream mixed together, I don't like the way that I, it doesn't seem appealing to my customers. But there are certain assumptions that we make that you have to validate. Then there's market entry, and this is, this is where Jacob's been hammering home in his lectures about hitting this first pin. How are you going to get that first customer, and how is that going to have a knock-on effect to, to the rest? Again, you can have uh, various different prototypes to uh, test this. The buyers. Are you going to be selling directly to the customer or are there middlemen? If there are middlemen, what type of uh, cut do they take? Um, you can test these, you'll have hypotheses on them at the moment, but they'll probably, reality will be radically different from what you're guessing at. So it's worth trying to test all these aspects. Uh, selling arrangements. Um, so what services will you need to provide? Uh, will you need to employ a sales force or go through a buyer? And then, of course, prices. So you need to make your margins on this product. How much are you assuming about the product's cost uh, in terms of all its components, both its supply, its transportation, its packaging, its manufacture, and so on, and how much are you assuming about how much the customers will pay for it? Now, there's quite a lot of information there, but that's meant as a reference point so you can go back and you can think about your product or project in terms of each one of these aspects and think have we really thought this through are we assuming too much here or should we do more to validate it so a quick exercise now 
hopefully you were here for this lecture where we, we did a small exercise on producing a, a method for selling sun cream on demand. So one of the problems with sun cream at the moment is it's sold in supermarkets and you have to think well in advance, okay, I might need sun cream in the future. You buy it in the supermarket, you take it home, you store it. Then on the day, you might have to think, okay, I think I might need sun cream at some point in the day, so I'll pack it in my bag and so on. This was an idea to say, well, can we sell sachets of sun cream or sun cream dispensers at the location it, it's needed? So the exercise for you now is what are the burning questions related to the market feasibility of this product? This product, I mean these sachets or small units of sun cream which are sold at the point of use. So in five minutes, I'd like you to just discuss in your groups what are the main questions with regards to market feasibility of this product? Okay, five minutes. Can you stop for a second? So, can anybody give me some important questions about the uh, feasibility of sun cream, of selling it in these types of sachets? So what important questions do we have to ask about it? A lot of customers might have uh, specific needs for their sun cream, um, perfume or factor or um, consistency of the cream. Okay, so to form it as a question, perhaps it would be, uh, what are the considerations with sun protection factor uh, from the customer side? Yeah. yeah okay. will, will the customers accept only one type of sun? Okay, good idea. or locations to sell this, okay. I'd rather phrase it as, uh, will people change their mindsets? Yeah. formed as a hypothesis now that's an important consideration but it, these are questions that we'd like to test through prototyping so it'd be perhaps in what form would they like to receive their dose yeah. would that be it are they willing to go to the just to start with and stand in line for half an hour before they okay. go get it And 
as well. What's the volume of the packaging and uh, what's the price? How do you price it so that it's actually buy it? Okay, the, I think these are questions of the product and production side rather than the market feasibility. Yeah, but I wouldn't, uh, isn't it uh, because you wouldn't want a too small size? If, if, if I have, to, sorry, um, if uh, what the product, if the product has a too small volume, then yeah. I okay. won't buy it. So dosing sizes, yeah. very good point. Okay, so we've got a, a list of questions there and, and the list can continue and in your groups I'd like you to think about which ones of those do you think are the most important. Um, but then go on to the next part of the exercise which is the real prototyping side. If we choose a couple of these questions I'd like you to discuss how you could test the feasibility using a prototype or some kind of uh, rig test. So we'll go back to these, consider one of those questions and think what kind of setup could you do to determine the feasibility. So each one of these are a hypothesis. We're in the business now of turning them into facts. How would we go about doing that? So in your groups, you have 10 minutes now, up to 10 minutes to think about, choose a couple of those questions. How would you turn those into facts through market prototyping? Okay. Okay, so uh, now I'd like to hear what experiments you have set up to test some of the hypotheses, test some of these questions. Well, we talk about a lot of these questions you can actually handle with a survey. Okay. Like question one and two, um, was it maybe five as well, maybe three as well. Okay. You could simply make a survey asking about their sun lotion habits. That's right. and, and you can get a really uh, quite clear view of, of their usage of it. Yeah. And um, with uh, question six, we talked about maybe contacting the Kaplan's Cancer Foundation okay. because they have a, a segment that deals with uh, skin cancer. So they have a lot of knowledge about how much sun lotion should you use and they can help you set up a facility where you can test how much sunscreen will the average person actually need. That's a good point. I mean, that's what we did as well. Um, but then there's also, I, I think you can tackle most of these things by surveys. The big problem is, cust if it's a new product, you're relying on the customer being able to predict what their behaviour would be in this new situation. And I think through uh, prototyping, you can do a, get a lot further than that. Also, the, the asking cancer research, what are the dosing sizes? You don't know what the customers are going to be dressed in. Are they going to be in uh, speedos or are they just going to have their hands and face showing? Uh, what do they actually need it for? Do most people just want their face and arms? What percentage of the people just want those covered? Uh, I'll, I'll go to someone else if that's all right. I'll come back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you go to the same beach um, every day or maybe in the whole July, you can also see if they they change their, their mindset and their habits because if you have an increase in the selling, you will know it. If they like, um, if they don't bring their sandwich because they know they can buy it at the beach. So this is a situation now where you actually have to make the product first, then you have to start selling it there in order to validate the market feasibility. So there's obvious problems with that in the sense that now you have to produce the entire product before you realize whether it's feasible to have the product or not. So it would be good, that would test it, but may maybe there's slightly cleverer ways or more ingenious ways to do it. Any other suggestions? Yeah, we talked about that you could uh, have a dispenser, like a soap dispenser, yeah. at the places that could solve maybe number one and six. Okay. So you could see uh, what the doses people use and which kind of factors okay. they use. So you just have a uh, factor 15, 30 and 45 and just allow people to use it as for yeah. free? Then have a guard there, check out what people are using, what 
really good idea. So let, let's just develop that idea a little bit further. So you, you realize that you go back to see your containers and all of the factor 15 has disappeared. So do you think from that do we suggest, okay, perhaps the first batch will just produce in slightly bigger quantities just factor 15 and cater for those people? Do we need to know anything a bit more about the way people use the sun cream or buy them or what their considerations are before they purchase? Maybe they use the factor 15 in larger volume so they use the factor 45. Maybe people want the 45 more but just don't use as much. So when we put together the prototype, we also have to think about these things. When we get our results, can we validate and get meaningful insights and answers? And also people's behavior when you give them something for free is a lot different than when they have to buy it. So if they know they can try this uh, sunscreen dispenser for free, yeah. they would just fill their palm and hand and mirror all of their bodies. And when you have to, have to buy them, they would be like, yeah, this costs money. I'm going to use it sparingly. And so there's a big difference in, in usage when, you, when it's for free and when it's... That's an extremely good point. I mean, the first question for your market is, is it going to be useful to the consumers? Then are they willing to pay for it? And then would they actually pay for it? And they're, they're quite different questions. But perhaps what you could do with regards to volume is you get one, one dose for free and then every additional dose you have to pay for. So you can then, by counting up the amount of money from each dish, you can realise which ones are just being used as single use and which ones are they going back to use further. Uh, we kind of saw the, the beach maybe as a, not the best market for it. Okay. Maybe we looked at um, like amusement parks and places like maybe petrol stations where you know, you're on a journey and you've forgotten okay. something. Sure. Sure. That's a hypothesis. So what would you do to elaborate that and test it? Dispensers giving out the sachets out of the music park, a couple of test ones. Cool. If you could design a packet with like Walt Disney or something and they could promote their image and brand and then right, I mean, just see how you maybe sell maybe sell a few from, from, from certain certain parks. So so maybe we could just hire some students to go around with uh, trays with pots of sun cream where you charge for one squirt of sun cream or or perhaps just give it away free and see which one gives it away the quickest. And that might give you some indication of which, which of the sales points is the, is the most rapid and best uh, point of entry. But you can see from just thinking about these, some of the questions and a bit of creativity around it, there's a lot further you can go than sending an email out to some people saying, you know, what would you do in this situation? You can actually go and test it and get some real market data just by some quite crude mock-ups. Um, so now we'll just spend the next uh, 10 minutes or so, I'd like you to do the same thing, but for your own projects. So you've already identified right at the beginning, there we go, uh, you've already identified at the beginning the questions about the market feasibility of your projects. Now I'd like you to think about some of the tests you can set up to validate or come up with some facts based on your hypotheses. So, 10 minutes, off you go.